Hello friends, welcome back. And today I'm gonna dive into Water Enhancer AI in the upcoming update to Luminar Neo, which is 1.19.0, coming April 25th, so it's really soon. And what I wanna do is walk through 10 different photo examples of how I'm using this, some things to be aware of, show you how the tool works, and just have fun playing in the water. Let's get going. The first one is this shot here of Notre Dame. And this is, uh, it needs a lot of work. Every one of these photos is just a JPEG. I've done some minor adjustments to the light. That's it, right? So none of these are edits. None of these are gonna be full edits. All of these 10 are just gonna be a demo of this really cool, really fun new tool. So Water Enhancer AI, by the way, um, you will notice there's a category called landscape. I've had some questions about that. I did not create that category. That's not me customizing Luminar. You can't do that. This is a new category that was created by Luminar and uh, Water Enhancer is in it. You can favorite by right clicking on tools. You can fave them and then they show up here uh, at the top in your favorites menu. Uh, but that's, uh, that's what uh, landscape category is all about. So first things first, it's quick. It is really quick. In fact, uh, I've been comparing it to Mask AI, which uh, does allow you to select water way quicker because I guess all it's doing is looking for water. It's not looking for all the different, I think there's nine elements in Mask AI. Uh, it's not looking for all those, it's looking for water and it finds it. I mean, every time it's really, really quick. And as you can see, pretty darn accurate, right? So, I mean, it's got really everything that I would want to do. And in fairness, not only is it quicker than I could be, but it's uh, quite a bit more accurate than I would be. Uh, so the amount is you know pretty straightforward. I think you got this from my previous videos. Uh, amount is just how much uh, do you want the effect to be applied. Now the effect is a combination of blue, green, original color, brightness, and contrast. So these, uh, like if you go really high in blue and really high on green, I mean, you're gonna get some crazy color combos if you're not careful. But the beauty is this original color slider. So let me just get back into the world of reality. I would take the green down. I might would make it zero. I might do a little bit of blue and maybe a little bit of that original color coming back and a middling kind of amount, 47. And if you look at the before and the after, it's a little bit of blue, but it's it's gotten away from that kind of grayish overcast look, which is exactly what I had in the water, as you can tell by the sky. Now, that's something to think about when you're editing. I'm not gonna do it in any of these photos, but any adjustments that you make to the water, I highly recommend you go back and get Mask AI and develop or color balance or something like that and play around with the sky because you want the colors and the tones to kind of be similar, I think. So while this tool is great, it is just the water, and I think you need to get the sky and the water to look kind of similar, right? Because the water, what's it doing? It's reflecting what's in the sky effectively, right? So uh, brightness and contrast, pretty straightforward. I love that you can do that. I think these are great tools to have here, and they all have some kind of impact on the photo, which is, which is quick and useful and accurate, as I said. So that's photo number one. Now, photo number two I want to show you is this one. And again, it's already had a little bit of editing done to it. I'm not going to go into anything else here, but I want to show you uh, on a photo like this, and I'm going to do this a lot where I drag this slider pretty far to the right on the amount slider. To be clear, every photo doesn't need that. In fact, all of these photos probably, none of these photos, in fact, probably need it. I'm doing it because it makes it more visible for you in the video. So even though you see me going pretty high in the values here with some of these sliders, it's not because I want to overdo the color, it's because I'm trying to make it super visible. Now, you can see, again, how quick that is, before and after, and as soon as you hover, the mask shows up, and what I wanted to point out here is, look at how smart it is. It's gone around that rock, it's gone around that boat, this rock, and these boats over here. It's overlapped that boat a little bit, it completely overlapped that boat, but honestly, it's so fast, uh, and it's pretty darn accurate, and it's going around things that it's recognizing as not being water. Most of the time, it's not 100% perfect, in fairness, right? No product is, no tool ever is, but I wanted to point out that it's pretty darn smart, and it's finding things in the water, and it's going around them. Now, you'll notice on the previous photo, and on this photo, these are both kind of slow water, right? The one in Paris was uh, just kind of slow, quiet, the river kind of going by. This is obviously the ocean, this is Italy. So it's a little bit choppy, but it's not fast moving water. So it's working well on slow moving water, but I also find, as you'll see in this photo, it's working quite well on fast moving water. This is pretty quick water zipping down a canyon in Canada, 
And again, pretty quick, pretty accurate. And again, disregard the value that I'm, I'm just dragging it to make it obvious. But you can see how quickly that's identifying it. And even with this much more blurred water, it's identifying it quickly and created that mask. And here's a good example of where it overlapped a little bit on these rocks. Come in, just click on erase in this refine area down below. Just erase that, right? And if you want to add some up there where it missed a tiny bit, just click on draw. And I'm just going to go over these bushes because I'm way too lazy to make it accurate. And I'll go over that little section there. And you know, you can quickly and easily just get it done and have that adjustment made for you uh, with, the, with the masking tool. So it's nice that those are built in. Uh, in a case like this, amounts, I'm usually starting, honestly, just to make it visible to me. I'm starting at about a 40, 50. I'm going kind of high. And then I, I tend, I, I like blue water a lot. So I tend to bring the blues up, but a situation like this, you might want to bring a little bit of that green in. Uh, and I don't know that I'd bring back much of the original color. So I think I would do a little bit of blue, a little bit of, uh, well, a little bit more blue than the green, but maybe a little bit of both and maybe adjust the amount a little bit. And if you look at the before and the after, before and after, I mean, it looks like water. I mean, it is water, of course, but it just looks natural. It doesn't look like I really enhanced the colors because if you've been here, this is Johnston Canyon outside of Banff, Canada, and all the minerals and all the things that come down off the glaciers and this glacial runoff, the water looks fairly blue most of the time. So there it is before, and there it is now. So working pretty well on fast water too. But of course, I had to go try it on an abstract. This is like a half second of a river just kind of zinging by, and you may or I mean, you can tell by looking at it that it's running water and it's a longer exposure, but you may not know, uh, let me rephrase that, uh, a lot of software may not say, hey, that's water. It might just look like an abstract kind of thing, but Water Enhancer uh, AI is grabbing that and it's turning it blue. Again, a high volume uh, or high value here, but if you look at the before and after, it found the whole thing, and if I hover, there's my mask. It's got almost the entire photo. It missed these tiny little bits up there that are really, really black. And so it may have thought those were shoreline or rock, uh, but it's effectively gotten the entire photo. Even though it's a long exposure abstract, it's picking up that pattern and it's saying, hey, this is water and boom, let's go, uh, let's go cover that up. And so the mask is applying uh, as it should apply uh, across the entire photo there. Now, of course, the other thing I like to do with water is take really long exposures. This is about a minute and a half, and yes, I see that spot. I told you these aren't edited. They're just adjusted for the light. Lots of work needed on these photos. But Water Enhancer is even picking up these really long exposures. So really short exposures, medium exposures, slow water, fast water, and completely blurred water that's uh, you know a really long exposure. And there you go. You can see it's picking that up. And hey, look at the rocks in the foreground. It's going around most of those again and doing a really good job of saving me a lot of work on masking because I definitely like to enhance water uh, and I like to uh, avoid those rocks. I don't want all the same colors going in the rock, of course, that goes into the water. So um, I wanted to point that out, that it's catching those things, but even with this really long exposure, it's doing a fine job. Now, we're going to get into waterfalls next but you will see it's picking up the waterfall as well. And depending on the photo, you may or may not want that, and that's what I'm gonna show you next. Okay, the next photo we're gonna look at is this little waterfall I caught while out shooting and hiking in New Mexico. Once again, I'm gonna go pretty high so you can see it, and you will see right away those rocks down here were not covered by the, uh, the mask. And so if I take my mask or my mouse off of the photo, you can see, let me hold this uh, before and after down so you can see a little bit better. But if you look at that, those rocks are a bit more defined. So my guess is the mask is, uh, the you know, the algorithm, whatever you want to call it, is looking at it and saying, I think that's a rock. I'm going to avoid that. Whereas over here, it's a little bit more of a swooshing water look on top of those rocks. And I, I it's not identifying those. So if I let go, you can see those were covered up. These were not. So quick, simple fix, of course. You just go to draw and go paint over it. But my guess is that's because of the shape and the visibility that the rock has based on how the exposure is taken, right? It's a little bit more visible. Maybe it's a little bit more shallow there. And even though the rocks are not jutting out of the water, they're still not being covered by the mask. Again, quick and easy fix. And in fact, the same thing happens here. If I move off the screen again, you can see that's a rock that's just barely underwater on the edge of this fall. I can cover that up. And it did the same up here. It did not get that rock. 
uh, or that little bit of waterfall. So a quick and easy fix, and I've got it all covered. And again, too much of a mount, too much blue. Hopefully it just gives you better visibility. But I wanted to point that out with waterfalls. You want to pay attention to things like that, what's under the surface of the water as well, as to whether or not it's being picked up. A lot of the times it is, like right over here, but as you saw over here, as it's a little bit closer to the water, a little bit more visible, and has a little bit more shape, um, I'm guessing that the algorithm is saying, hey, I don't think that's water, I don't want to cover it up, and so that's happening. Now, having done that, I'm going to get into another waterfall example and show you this one. Now this is a waterfall in Iceland, and of course I'm going to hit Water Enhancer, and I'm just going to drag this pretty high in the blue. And what you'll notice here is it probably has to do with the ambient light of the scene and all that, but here the white parts of the waterfall are turning that blue as well, whereas in the last one they didn't really pick up as much blue. So this is a case where I would come in with the eraser, and I would actually just erase this from the mask. Uh, because my personal opinion is, when I have flowing water like that in a waterfall, I pretty much want it to be white, uh, pretty much all the time. It got a little bit over here that I don't care about, so I'm going to clean that up. And I actually would do a little touch there, where the white parts are kind of hitting the surface of the pool. Uh, and so that would allow me to have that look, versus blue water on the waterfall. To me, that falling water pretty much needs to be white, and it was picking up the blue there. So now, if you look at the blue in the foreground, just that pool, it's in the right places. Again, too much blue, but I think that's something that you want to think about and pay attention to when you're using it on running water or waterfalls especially, is that you want to see how is it impacting the look of the water in the waterfalls, and if you want that to maintain kind of a wider look, you can erase that. Uh, or you can reduce the strength and erase it partially which is actually what I'm going to do on the next photo. So let's pop over there and get into this one. Previously edited, all those kind of things. Same disclaimers apply. Uh, so water enhancer, and I'm just going to jack it up, and I go to 70. And once again, pretty accurate. It found all these rocks, and it went around them. It did a pretty darn good job on the horizon line, and it, did, it followed the water all the way up onto the beach. But the but here is, as I move my mouse out of the way, the water on the beach is incredibly, incredibly thin or shallow. It's a very tiny layer of water. It is water, so technically the tool did exactly what it's designed to do. It finds the water, and in this case, it turns it blue, right? Found the water all the way up to here. The thing is, is like I don't expect uh, you know, a, a fraction of an inch of a fraction of a fraction of an inch maybe. I don't expect that water to look very blue because it's so shallow and it's sunset and there's nothing that would really make it blue. I do expect more blue tones in the deeper water and even the water over here. So this is where I come in with the eraser and I would just take the strength down and I might, you know, drop it to 30. I don't know what the number is. I would experiment, but I would come in and then just start erasing along that edge just to give you the look that you want in that water, right? So you don't want too much of that blue. So just come in and make the adjustments that you deem necessary in order to more accurately blend it into the photo. I think that looks a little bit better. It might still be a little bit more too blue there. So maybe I take the strength a little higher that section and erase a little more strongly there. Something like that. Again, season to taste, experiment. But I think that looks a little bit more accurate. Keep in mind, there's way too much blue uh, because I, I dragged the uh, slider to 50. But uh, I wanted to point that out. Now, the other thing I want to point out is I would come in here with the strength pretty high, like maybe 75 or 80, and a smaller mouse, left bracket key will make a smaller mouse. And if I move my mouse, you can see this little section here, these are white caps where the waves are crashing over some really lower rocks, and I don't want those white caps to be blue. White caps, to me, are white, right? So I'm often in photos like this. Uh, using develop like a multiple times of course but using develop again and again and one of my uses of develop on a photo like this would be to go mask over those and then uh, just increase the whites or increase the exposure just to brighten them a little bit so um, I've erased the blue or most of it not all of it maybe you want to go even a hundred strength get rid of that and then if you need to go into develop paint over them with a mask and maybe lift the exposure lift the whites a little bit just play with it to make it a little bit wider and make it a little bit more prominent. But um, it is water, and so again, the tool did exactly what it's supposed to do. It found the water there, and it said, hey, you want me to be at 50 blue? Done. 
and it did the same thing on the wet sand. You want 50 blue? Done, because it is water. It's just moving water like that that has some white caps in it, I think should be white, so reduce that or erase it with the eraser. Uh, and same thing on the wet sand, just you know, season to taste, focus on uh, getting it to look the way you want it to look. Okay, next up is this uh, photo. And again, some basic edits done here, and I'm gonna go water enhancer. And you already know how it works. What I wanna point out here is about the reflections. Now, the blue, blues and greens are pretty close together. So if you look at the reflections, they're a bit more yellow and a bit more muted. And because I just bumped up the water pretty significantly, I've also bumped up the kind of the color tone and the shade really of that green because the green has a lot of blue in it. So if you look at the before and the after, it's a lot richer green and frankly, it doesn't really match the green that's above. Now, you don't have to go that high, of course, on the amount of blue or the amount of the amount slider. Um, but you know, maybe a situation where you bring up the greens and in doing so, it doesn't really make the water look bad. It looks kind of nice, frankly. But again, those greens are really not matching the greens that are up here. So this is another example of where I would go open the color tool, right? I would just go up here to color, wherever it is, there it is. Uh, and I would go into hue uh, of the greens and the, possibly the yellows. And I would move them both more towards kind of a, a richer green color. I first, of course, would come in with a brush mask. And I'm going to do this really quickly and sloppily. So I'm just going to paint over these greens here. And you're going to pretend that that's a good job, but we both know that it's not. Uh, but I'll go into the hue, and I think on the yellows, I would take them more toward the green. There's a lot of yellow in those greens. You can see how that green is changing if you look at the before and the after. Uh, and you can also take this green, and you can drag it to the right to make it a little bit richer. So my point is not, look at how I got the greens to match. Kind of, actually, that is part of the point. Uh, my point, mostly, though, is... The greens uh, in the reflection will be impacted uh, based on the color choices that you make in the water enhancer tool. So you may want to come back and go into the color tool with a mask to fix anything that the reflection has been altered by uh, based on the color changes that you did in water enhancer. So just keep that in mind. It's a good little tip or trick, but now I think they go together pretty well. So if you look at the before and after, right, before and after the top and the bottom uh, half, kind of match in terms of the green tones. So something to think about and keep in mind. And the last photo that I want to look at, and I wanted to bring this one because this is light trails. Now, all this is water, but the light trails, of course, is this is a boat. This is in Venice. Uh, this is a boat going by. And so this is where I've seen water, water enhancer get, uh, depends on the size of the light trail, it may or may not get confused, right? So if I hover, you will see it's a, getting a little splotchy here. Generally, I find these thinner little light trails where everything's pretty much a complete blur. It's picking those up and leaving them alone kind of like that, but getting a good bit of the water around it. But when you have a wider section like this, where there's some blurred out boat and light trails and all that together, it may not pick it up. So you might want to come in and do some custom masking. Like here, if I hover again out of the way, you can see right down in here, because that's not covered, it's still kind of brown, like the original water, right? Which is kind of reflecting some of the golden tones on the walls there. But you might want to come in with the with the brush and just come paint over that. Uh, and you might want to get something kind of specific and maybe just paint in certain areas, but not all of them. It's going to depend on the photo, of course. So you can make it look totally fine with a little adjustments with the brush. But I wanted to point out with light trails, Depends on the photo, depends on how wide they are and how blurred it is. If it's really just a light and a thin strip, it seems to be not getting confused by that as much as it is by something really wide with a lot more blur and different colors, which makes sense because it's saying, hey, that's not water, Jim. I don't, I don't think I'm going to cover that up. So again, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Regardless, all of it's way faster than doing this on your own, which is, I guess, one of the key points of the tool. It saves you a lot of time. And honestly, it allows you to make adjustments that I think can just really impact a photo. That's 10 different examples of how I'm using a Water Enhancer AI and 10 things to be thinking about when you're using it. Tips, tricks, ideas, insights, just stuff like that to think about. You'll be getting it soon. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helps. Comments, questions down below. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll be back soon with more videos on the new features coming in Luminar Neo. Thanks, my friends. You guys take care. I will see you really soon. And until then, adios.